Hello, how's everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, a couple weeks ago, Adobe Max was held, and Adobe made some releases, uh, upgrades to Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, and Adobe Camera Raw. And as usual, you know, we had good enhancements across all the product lines. Uh, but what we found is that they made two enhancements or improvements to Adobe Camera Raw that didn't make it to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. And because of that, because they were, you know, not earth shattering, but they were significant and had nice improvements to the workflow, I did get some emails and a, a couple calls from friends saying, I love these enhancements in Adobe Camera Raw, but I can't figure out the workflow using Lightroom Classic so that I can use them without getting all junked up in, in Photoshop. It was just a clunky workflow. So what I did is I sat down and looked at all the iterations and how you can move back and forth between Lightroom and Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw through Photoshop without really getting bogged down in details. And I think I found a nice uh, workflow workaround. I won't so much call that a hack as a workaround because uh, Hack, it just seems like it's something real technical you have to do, where a workaround is just something logical that ends to a nice, even workflow. So let me first, let's go into Adobe Camera Raw, and let me show you the two new enhancements that uh, are in place that we don't see in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. The first one is under Profile. And if we click on the Profile window, we see all the regular profiles that we've always had in here, and I have one for my camera. Uh, but this new one here, Adobe Adaptive, if we launch on that one, you can see it makes some nice color changes and some nice contrast changes. Now, if you don't know what a profile is, a profile is that jumping off point, a way to make color and contrast changes to your photograph without hitting it like you would with sliders. In fact, we put this Adobe Profile, Adaptive Profile in place, and if we look at our sliders, no sliders have been changed, so that gives us a good way to get started with a photograph. Like I said, a good jumping point. Now, some people say, well, I can do that with, with presets. Well, you could. Uh, let's change this back to Adobe Color, and we'll go to a preset. We'll grab this one here. And if we look at our sliders, you can see that every one of our sliders in color, effects, curves, all these have been touched. So if we do have to make some bigger changes, because the sliders have already been moved, that gives us less latitude to make those changes. So let's go ahead and, and turn these all back off and reset so we can see Adobe Color. And if we go to Adaptive, good changes, and people will say, well, what, doesn't Auto do that? Well, we'll do Auto. Auto has some good changes, a little lighter than I would like, but again, Look at our sliders, they've been moved. So now if I wanted to make some changes to highlights, I got very, very little movement in here, all right? Or our shadows, very little movement compared to using Adobe Color, let's reset our sliders and just use our adaptive, good changes and no moves from the sliders. So it gives us a good jumping off point. So we can get started with a picture with some nice, color changes and contrast changes made for us pre-slider. The other area that was improved is under the denoise, and that's under detail here in Adobe Camera Raw. And we'll turn on the denoise. Now what's gonna happen is, it's not going to make a DNG file for us to look at and make these changes. In Lightroom, in Lightroom Classic, when we use the denoise feature, it automatically creates a new file, a DNG file, and any of those changes that we're using uh, in the denoise slider, it's applied to that DNG. So you're really not getting a look at the raw data so that you can make those decisions. So here you can see it applied the enhancement. It did not make a new DNG file. We're actually looking at the raw file, you can see right here. And now we can make our denoise changes. And more importantly, I can zoom into any part of the photograph that I want and move around to see how those changes are being made. So it's just, it's not a major improvement, it's just a nice workflow improvement so we can see these changes. Now if I wanna hit the little eyeball here, I can see before and after, before and after. If I like the changes, I just hit OK and it does create a DNG file at that time with the changes that we uh, used with our denoise slider.
So now that we've seen what these new features are, how do we get from Lightroom into Photoshop and use these features without jumping through a whole lot of hoops? The first off I thought was just hit Control E or edit in Photoshop and then jump into Camera Raw. But when we do that, when we leave Lightroom and go into Photoshop, depending on how you have that transfer set up in your preferences, it's either going to go over as a TIFF file or a PSD. And those new features in Adobe Camera Raw can only work on raw files. So just dropping it into Photoshop is not going to get you those features. They won't even show up in Adobe Camera Raw because you're presenting it with a TIFF or a PSD file. So we have to overcome that. And the best way to do it, again, is to go up under Photo, go to Edit In, and at the very bottom here, we want to open as a smart object. Now, if you're not aware of what a smart object is, a smart object is a special layer uh, or process in Photoshop that allows us to move back and forth from the from the filter or the process that originally brought this layer into Photoshop. And I know, I know that sounds kind of convoluted, but because we opened this from Lightroom, Photoshop is kind of tricked into thinking that this smart filter was made uh, for Adobe Camera Raw. So if we double click on our a layer here, it will relaunch where Photoshop thinks that the original photograph came from. All right, It didn't come from a co Adobe Camera Raw, it came from Lightroom, but we've kind of tricked it by bringing it into Photoshop as a smart filter. So if we do go up here to filter and go to Adobe Camera Raw, that's not using the smart filter process. And as you can see, we don't have our adaptive preset and we don't have our denoise in here. All right, so let's cancel out of this. And now what we want to do is double click on our thumbnail. When we do that, voila, it opens up into Adobe Camera Raw. And if we look, we have our denoise. Let's cancel that for now. And we have our profile, our adaptive profile. So we can make the changes. We can make the changes with our denoise. We can see the whole photograph. We can make our changes uh, in how much denoise we want to apply. We can zoom into the photograph and look at certain portions to make sure the denoise is not too heavy and not too light. Get it just right. Once we have it the way we want. If you wanted to make other changes in here, you can. But really, we just came in here for those two features, so I'm just going to say OK. It takes it out to Photoshop, applies those changes. Now if we hit Command S, it saves it and drops it into Lightroom. So here we're waiting for the save when we hit 100%. We can go back into Lightroom Classic. And you can see our photograph right here with all the changes that we made with using our smart filter in Photoshop and the two new features in Adobe Camera Raw. And then you can continue on with all your processing that you need to do in Lightroom to make this picture look exactly like you like. So again, let me just go over this real quick so we can uh, make sure we understand. We want to have our raw photograph in uh, Lightroom. We want to go to Photo, Edit In, Open as a Smart Object, it's going to open up in Adobe Camera Raw, right within Photoshop. I'm sorry, it'll open up into Photoshop. You want to double click on your thumbnail. It opens up in the Adobe Camera Raw. You make your changes. You click OK. You then hit Command S to save it. Once it's saved into Lightroom, you go back into Lightroom and you'll see that you have your photograph here. I ship mine over as a PSD, so that's what it comes back into. And from there, I can start making all the changes to finish up my processing on this photograph in Lightroom Classic. Well, I hope this little workflow uh, workaround helps out for everybody. If anybody has any other questions or any other hiccups that they've run across in this new uh, upgrade to Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw, please shoot me an email and I'll jump on it just like I did with this one and help you out any way I can. Thanks. I'll talk to you all soon.